Welcome to my video channel. Today I'm painting some detail on a portrait I've been working on and I hope you watch it and enjoy it. The convenient thing to do when it comes to promoting yourself and your artwork is to just post a photo of what I'm painting in social media and on my website. Conversely, it takes a little effort to make a video about painting into something people will be interested. And like some of you, I'm very much influenced and thankful for many of the artists that regularly post their videos on YouTube. If you find my contribution helpful, then my efforts are not in vain. I think that in combination with photography and various media, our video is also a great way to promote art and art instruction. This is my start, if you will, toward that end. A question many artists ask themselves, how can I promote my work to the public? After all, if no one sees your paintings, you will naturally be left somewhat unfulfilled, I think. Another benefit, I think, is that it documents your journey into achieving your artistic goals. Any artist promoting their work for sale is also a business person. It is not a given that artists are by nature good business people. It is a left brain activity and art is predominantly a right brain activity. And these two activities are opposed. From a business standpoint, it seems that a YouTube video must be a top priority in marketing my work however uncomfortable or difficult it may be. Here you're witnessing my initial effort to tackle the business end of the creative process. Fortunately, making a video is a creative process itself, but it competes with the time I have to plan and produce finished paintings. I know that some artists are better at this than others. Only time will tell how I'm going to fit in. I know it's not a given, but I will give it my best. It's not that I've never created videos before. As a licensed real estate agent, I've made a lot of videos in that business over the years, and I even was the host of my own real estate radio show once a few years ago, and we videoed a lot of those segments and posted them on YouTube. Yet I can't help but feel a little awkward about promoting myself as an artist. I'm not used to it and not at all sure how it will be received. After all, I could fail at the very thing I love the most. I'm exposed and it's all online for the world to see. I'll either gain traction here with video or I won't. In this respect, I will work through the process and see if I can gain an audience by capturing for my audience via my own unique way of presenting a painting video in hopes that people can relate to what I'm sharing from out of my studio. Here you see me in the artistic process. My medium is oil on canvas. For today, I'm only painting, not instructing. I like to watch other artists paint, and so that is what I'm trying to do here by painting for you, the viewer. I'm sharing a slice of time from within my studio during my painting process. If you like to observe artists at their easel as I do, then this video is for you. You might find that something I am doing encourages or inspires you, while another person may comparatively examine their process against mine. If we all share with each other, we can all become better at our craft. You might have noted I am holding a photo reference of my subject in one hand and painting with the other. Some artists hold a roll of paper towels under their arm. Some artists have several brushes in one hand while painting with the other. I can say that I do all these things too but here, I'm looking at a lot of detail in the photo and going back and forth between the photo 
and applying my brush to the canvas. As for the subject, this is Reverend Roger Grist, my church pastor for the last 20 years. This is not a commissioned portrait, but rather I wanted to honor him by painting it. Obviously, there is a lot of detail here. Much of the detail is with the robe is within the robe and vestments. But there is also detail in the face, the stained glass, the various aspects of the pipe organ, and the baptismal font in the background, which was all painted before this video. I wanted the background to be relevant and not overly subdued as one might expect in a portrait, but I didn't want it to compete with or overpower the subject either. Honestly, there was so much detail in this painting that I became a bit fatigued from it in the beginning, and so I set the painting aside for a rest and worked on other paintings for a few months. I knew the filigree on the robe and the sash would challenge me, and that I needed the right mindset and a fresh perspective before coming back to it. I knew I would need as much of my right brain as I could bear on this part of the painting, using negative space to help me lay in the detail. The drudgery of it that I experienced in the early stages was later rewarded as the shapes began to eventually make visual sense. I had to shift some mental gears and work myself into it. Maybe you've had a similar experience in your own paintings. I wanted the detail on the robe to be somewhat abstract by suggesting the shapes rather than attempting to perfectly copy from the photo, even though it looks as if I'm reproducing the photo. Some paintings almost seem to create themselves as if they were predestined in spite of the artist's efforts to the contrary. That's why some paintings fail, I think, even though you've put in your best effort and others become your best work, even when you thought they wouldn't work out at all. My process on the robe and sash filigree was to apply desaturated color with a medium value alongside a slightly lighter value, and by arranging the shapes in a reasonably convincing but suggestive pattern. I attempted to emulate Sorolla and Sargent. Sargent was excellent at using abstract shapes to suggest detail, and when the viewer moved away from the painting, the observer's mind would resolve those roughly painted abstract shapes into the image that the artist wanted to portray. In many of Sorolla's paintings, you will find wonderful and well-executed detail within the historic traditional costumes of his time. You be the judge whether I was at all successful. I can only follow the clues left by the greats in hopes of improving my own work. As I've often done with previous paintings, I know that someday I'll look back on this painting and critique it, repainting it in my own mind, but with a more experienced eye. I look back at my older paintings which seem fine at the time, but now seem amateurish, and which I wouldn't trot out for the public to see. I hope you have enjoyed my short video. If so, please subscribe to my channel and like this video, which will help promote my channel. Also, if interested, you can see my paintings on my website see below and sign up for email updates and the newsletter there too. Your comments and critiques are welcome. Hope you join me on the next painting video. God bless.